At the time that the physician decides to put a patient in observation status, this would be a, the group of codes you would choose from. The second paragraph gives us a couple of situations to consider. The guidelines tell us when the patient is admitted to the hospital after being in the observation care status on the same date. Look at the notes for the initial hospital care. The guidelines also tell us if the patient is admitted and discharged on the same date to look at codes 99234 to 99236. The guidelines throughout the ENM chapter assist us in determining whether we have selected the correct group of codes. Continuing in the guidelines, we are told when observation status is initiated in the course of an, another service, all those services are included in the observation status. If the patient was being evaluated in the emergency department and the physician desi decides to move the patient into observation status, the physician would not charge for his e emergency department services. He would use only this initial observation care code. The last note under the initial observation care section cautions us that these codes cannot be used for post-op recovery. If the patient has a procedure in an outpatient setting and was supposed to be released to go home, but instead kept for observation, the observation care would be considered part of the post-op care and included in the surgical package. Now let's look at hospital inpatient services. This set of codes is used not only for the inpatient facility, but also if you're reporting for a partial hospitalization program. This category is further divided into subcategories for initial hospital care and subsequent hospital care, just like our office visits for new patient and established patient. A note under initial hospital care explains this is for the first hospital inpatient encounter by the admitting physician. If there are other initial inpatient encounters by physicians that are not the admitting physician, look at the initial inpatient consultation codes or subsequent hospital care as appropriate. Sometimes an admitting physician is present in the morning, and when the rounds change, another physician assumes care for the patient. In this example, the admitting physician in the morning would report the admit code, and the second physician in the afternoon would report his services as a consult or a subsequent hospital care, depending on the services provided. You can't report two initial hospital care visits in the same day from the same episode. This is a CPT guideline, however, for Medicare, it is possible to have more than one physician report the initial hospital care. The guidelines also instruct us to report 99234 through 99236 for services where a patient is admitted and discharged as inpatient or observation on the same data service. Subsequent hospital care codes are used for the subsequent visits during the inpatient stay. All level of subsequent hospital care include reviewing the medical record, test results, and assessing changes in the patient's status since the last assessment. Observation or inpatient care codes identify services when the patient is admitted and discharged on the same date. For example, a patient comes into the ER at 2 a.m. with an acute stomach ache and the physician places the patient in observation status to see what's going on. The physician orders some labs and the patient gets some rest. By 8 a.m. when the physician takes his rounds, the patient is feeling much better. The situation has resolved, the lab work has come back negative, and the physician decides to release the patient. Because the patient is admitted and discharged on the same data service, one code would be used for this section. Hospital discharge day management codes are billed by the amount of time the physician spends completing care for the patient. The final exam paperwork writing of the prescriptions and sitting down with the patient's family members or caregiver to give relevant instructions on how to care for the patient are all included in the discharge day management. A parenthetical instruction at the end of this set of codes reminds us to refer to codes 99234 through 99236 for admit and discharge on the same data service. The parenthetical notes also provide instruction on how to bill for concurrent care by another physician on the discharge date. The concurrent care would be reported with subsequent hospital care codes. The final parenthetical note in this section instructs us to look at 99463 for discharge services provided to newborns admitted and discharged on the same data service. 
The next category in E&M is consultation services. Consultation codes are divided by location. When coding consultation services in an office or an outpatient setting, you will use 99241 to 99245. If you're coding for inpatient consultations, you would select 99251 through 99255. Your CPT coding manual defines a consultation as a type of evaluation and management service provided at the request of another physician or appropriate source to either recommend care for a specific condition or problem or to determine whether to accept responsibility for ongoing management of the patient's entire care or for the entire specific condition or problem. Other appropriate sources may be a physician's assistant or nurse practitioner. To qualify for a consultation, the documentation has to meet what we call the three R's. There must be a request by another physician. The consulting provider needs to render his own or his or her own opinion. And three, the consulting provider needs to respond with a written report to the requesting provider. Another type of consult you may see is one mandated or requested by an insurance company. For example, in workers' compensation cases, there are times when a physician says the patient is not ready to go back to work. The insurance company may request a second opinion. In that situation, report a consult code and append a modifier 32 to indicate service occurred at the request of an insurance company. If, subsequent to the completion of the consult, the consulting physician assumes responsibility for the patient, the subsequent care would be billed on the correct place of service, office visit or hospital, nursing home facility, etc., depending on where the patient is seen. Consultation codes do not distinguish between new or established. For an inpatient consultation codes, only one consultation code should be reported by a consultant per admission. If the consultant visit, if the consultant visit now turn to the emergency department section. Emergency department codes do not distinguish between new or established patients. For services to qualify as emergency department services, they must be provided in a facility that is hospital-based and available 24 hours a day. The Instacare and Urgent Care facilities open after regular office hours are not considered emergency department services and you wouldn't be use the subsection codes emergency department. Emergency department services will always be provided in a hospital-based facility. Just below the emergency department visits is a code for physician direction of EMS emergency care advanced life support. There are situations where a physician will direct the emergency care from the emergency department. For instance, the patient will be in an ambulance or at a scene, and the physician will direct the ambulance or rescue personnel how to provide care to the patient. Critical care services are provided to patients in the hospital who crit are critically ill or injured. Services must be the criteria of a critical illness or injury defined in the CPT critical care guidelines. The critical care guidelines define a critical illness or injury as one that ac acutely impairs one or more vital organ systems, such as there is a high probability or life-threatening deterioration deterioration in the patient's condition. Critical care is usually provided in a critical care area, but not always. Services provided to a patient who is in critical care unit, but not considered critically ill, would be reported using another ENM code. The same physician can, be critical, can bill critical care and other ENM services on the same date. CPT also includes instructions for reporting pediatric critical care and neonatal critical care. This will be further discussed when we reach the neonatal and pediatric critical care sections. There are a lot of guidelines in the critical care services part of your CPT book. You should review those and make notes in that section. CPT includes a list of services that are considered inclusive to critical care. These services should not be reported separately when provided during the critical care period by the same physician providing the critical care. You will need to refer back to it when coding for critical care to avoid unbundling services or missing opportunities to bill additional services. It may be beneficial to highlight each of the CPT codes listed in the paragraph.
So when you're on the exam, you can easily refer back to your guidelines and find the CPT code you're looking for. The attendance of transport of critically ill or critically injured patients over 24 months of age should be reported with the critical care codes. If the patient is under 24 months of age, they are reported with different codes. Critical care is billed in time increments. If the total time of critical care is less than 30 minutes, bill the appropriate ENM code instead of the critical care code. Code 99291 is used to build the first 30 to 74 minutes. After the first 74 minutes, build the add-on code 99292 for each additional 30 minutes. When calculating the time for critical care codes, include the total time by the physician on the date of service, even if it's not continuous. The time spent on the floor unit reviewing patient records and tests, as well as the time spent on the floor or unit with family members to obtain additional information on the patient is included in the time you report for critical care. That's an important note you should write in your book. Time spent off of the floor may not be included. Neither may time for separately billable services be included in the time. CPT guidelines provide a convenient table to help you convert the amount of critical care time to CPT codes. You should see a table like this in your CPT book. 30 to 74 minutes is now 9291. That's 30 to 1 hour and 14 minutes. It breaks it down for you like this, so you should definitely use this table. The next category of ENM is nursing facility services. The guidelines pertain to care that is given in a nursing facility as well as services provided to a patient in a psychiatric residential treatment center. You should write that next to this guideline and in your index. Nursing facility services are divided into initial care and subsequent care. This section does not distinguish between new and established patients. Services performed at other sites of services performed with the admission were considered inclusive and are included in the nursing facility admission. Exceptions to this are hospital discharge and observation discharge services billed on the same date. These services may be reported separately. Parenthetical instructions in your CPT manual tell us to see 99315 and 99316 for nursing facility discharge services. When a patient is discharged from a nursing facility, all services provided on that date are included in the time used to report the discharge from the nursing facility. As with discharge from hospital admission, this includes instructions for care, preparation of discharge papers, prescriptions, and referral forms, in addition to any care given to the patient on that date. The last subcategory under nursing facility is other nursing facility services. 
This section includes one code for the annual assessment that is required by law for patients in a skilled nursing facility. Every year, these patients must have a detailed annual assessment, which would be coded with 99318. The next category in evaluation and management codes are for services provided to patients in domiciliary, rest homes, boarding homes, custodial care services, or assisted living. You may want to make an entry in the alphabetic index or in your table of contents at the beginning of the section Write in assisted living, custodial care services, rest homes, and boarding homes. Care plan oversight services are used when the physician provides the oversight of the patient's care plan for services provided to patients in domiciliary, rest homes, boarding homes, custodial care services, or assisted living. These types of facilities differ from nursing facility in that there is no medical component to the care. A physician will review the case management plan for the patient and any test results. Although there is no daily nursing care for the patients in these types of facilities, the physician will check with the workers to see if they noticed anything out of the order to see if they noticed anything out of order, such as increased disorientation or skipping meals. The patients are typically on medication under the care of their physician, and the physician will review what is planned for the patient. The physician may write new orders or will make a new care plan for the patient. This service is billed in increments of time. Relevant codes are divided into whether the patient is a new or an established patient. Our next category is home services. When a physician sees the patient in his or her home, look at the subsection of codes. Home visit or private resident codes are divided into subcategories for new and established patients. The next category of codes is prolonged services. Prolonged services are separated by with direct patient contact and without direct patient contact. They are further subdivided between office outpatient services, or services provided in an inpatient setting. Most of the codes in this section are add-on codes. The only exception is the Physician Standby Services Code, which may be reported independently from other codes. The codes for prolonged services with direct patient contact are used to report the total duration of face-to-face -face time spent by a physician or other qualified healthcare professional on a given date providing prolonged services, even if the time is not continuous and must meet 30 minutes before the codes can be assigned. The services are reported in addition to other services, including e &M services at any level. Additional appropriate codes should be selected for supplies provided or procedures performed in the care of the patient during this period. Codes 99358 through 99359 are used to report prolonged physician services without direct patient contact, but does require the billing provider, but does require the billing provider to see the patient at some point. The last code in this category is for standby services. Standby services are used to report time when a provider is on standby at the request of another provider. This service is only reported for more than 30 minutes in duration, with additional units reported for each additional 30 minutes of standby time. Do not report standby services if the period of standby ends with the performance of a procedure subject to surgical package or the global period. The surgical package includes the operation itself, local anesthesia, and typical follow-up care. You should review these guidelines in the surgical guidelines section. For example, if a cardiothoracic surgeon standing by during a echocardiography performs emergency open heart surgery, the standby service would not be reported because the open heart surgery was reported and it's included in the surgical package.
The next category is case management services. CPT defines case management services as a process in which a physician or another qualified healthcare professional is responsible for direct care of a patient and additionally for counseling management and managing access to, initiating, and or supervising other health care services needed by the patient. The case management section reports medical term team conferences either with direct contact with the patient or family or without direct contact with the patient or family. The medical team conference requires a minimum of three qualified healthcare professionals from different specialties or disciplines. For guidelines, a physician bills a regular E&M service for a conference with a patient or family and uses the conference codes for those held without the patient or family. The next category is care plan oversight. Care plan oversight services are monthly for the time a physician spends overseeing the patient care. The patient's location and time drive the code selection. The patient's location could be home health agency, hospice, and nursing facility. The codes are billed by time. The next category is preventative medicine services. It is used when the patient is not ill, but is coming in for an annual physical exam. The codes are divided between new and established patients and are selected based on the patient's age. If the patient presents for preventative medicine services and an abnormality is encountered or a pre-existing problem is addressed, and the abnormality or problem is significant enough to require additional work to perform the key components of a problem E&M code, the appropriate code from the office visit section should be reported in addition to the preventative medicine services. A 25 modifier must be appended to the office or outpatient services code. Now turn to the non-face-to-face -face services section. This section addresses advances in technology for the treatment of patients. Non-face-to-face -face services include telephone services and online medical evaluations. The telephone service codes are selected based on the time spent on the phone with the patient. There are some guidelines you need to know. The patient must be an established patient. The online medical evaluation is reported only once for the same episode of care during the seven, a seven-day period. A physician must provide the service. Services for telephone and online evaluation by a non-physician are reported with codes from the medicine section. If the phone call refers to an E&M visit performed within the previous seven days or within the post-op period of a surgery, it cannot be reported. And if the phone call results in a visit to the physician within the next 24 hours or the next available urgent visit, it is not reported. You should highlight that in your guidelines. The special evaluation and management services include basic life and or disability evaluation services and work related or medical disability evaluation services. You must meet specific guidelines listed under each code to report these services. The next category is newborn care services, which are provided to newborns aged 28 days or less and are separate from other hospital care codes. Typically, a pediatrician provides this care to evaluate the health of a newborn. The codes are separated by, by location and by initial or subsequent visit. Within newborn care services are delivery or birthing room attendance and resuscitation services. Attendance at delivery should only be used when requested by the delivering physician. If the delivering physician believes there is a risk to the newborn, she may request a pediatrician be present for the delivery. Pediatrician critical care patient transport codes are to be reported when a physician is in physical attendance during the interfacility transport of a critically ill or critically injured patient 24 months of age or less. CPT guidelines tell us that face-to-face -face time starts when the physician assumes primary responsibility of the pediatric patient and ends when the receiving facility accepts responsibility for the patient's care. If this amount of time is less than 30 minutes, do not report 99466 or 99467. Instead, report the appropriate E&M code. CPT code 99466 
is for 30 minutes to 74 minutes of hands-on care. 99467 is for each additional 30 minutes. There are also codes for the control physician during interfacility transport. The control physician is the physician providing treatment advice to the transport team. Inpatient neonatal and pediatrician care services are used to report services provided to critically ill and critically injured patients through the age of five. The pediatrician and neonatal care codes include the same procedure as critical care codes 99291 through 99292 as well as additional procedures listed in the CPT guidelines. This will be an important paragraph to reference when billing these services. You should make a note next to these codes to reference the guidelines. Inpatient neonatal and pediatrician care services are defined by the age of the patient. There are initial and subsequent codes for neonates 28 days of age or less. Infant or young child 29 days through 24 months of age and young child 2 to 5 years of age. The same definition of critical illness described in hourly criteria codes, these are billed only once per day and time is not a factor in determining code choice. Finally, in this subsection, we have initial and continuing intensive care services. This section of codes is used to report services to a child who is not critically ill but requires intensive observation, frequent interventions, and other intensive care services. CPT code 99477 is used for the initial hospital care. Codes 99478 through 99480 are used for subsequent intensive care and are selected based on the present body weight of the infant. Just like the intensive care codes, they are billed once per day and time is not a factor in code choice. Lastly, we have sections to report oversight of chronic and complex chronic care patients and transitional care management services. Chronic care management and complex chronic care management services are reported based on time. Patients must have two or more chronic illnesses that require coordination of chronic care management services. The patient's chronic conditions must meet certain required elements in order to report codes 99487, 99489, or 99490. The codes in this category can only be reported once in a calendar month. Patients who receive this type of service live at home or in a domiciliary, domiciliary rest home or assisted living facility. Now I'll turn to the advanced care planning section. An advance directive is a document appointing an agent and recording the wishes of the patients regarding their medical treatment in the future, should they lack the decisional capability to direct their own care. Codes 99497 and 99498 reports, report face-to-face -face service between a physician or other qualified healthcare professional and the patient, family member, or surrogate in counseling and discussing advanced directives. This service may or may not end in completing the necessary legal forms. Examples of written advanced directives include healthcare proxy, durable power of attorney for healthcare, living will, and medical orders for life-sustaining treatment, M-O-L-S-T. Transitional care management services are for oversight of care for patients discharged from an inpatient hospital setting, partial hospital, observation status, skilled nursing facility, or, or nursing facility. Transitional care service management is intended to prevent repeat admissions. These codes in this subsection can only be reported once in a 30-day period. The codes 99495 through 99496 are selected based on the level of medical decision-making, moderate or high, and when the first face-to-face -face encounter occurs after discharge. That's the end to evaluation and management guidelines. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper into leveling.